Hey, this is Kevin and welcome to another vid video in which I explain one of my standard SEO workflows that I use all the time. Today, I want to show you a workflow in which I discover new featured snippet opportunities. I know there have been some case studies that tell that or say that actually featured snippets can decrease click through rates because users get the answer from the featured snippet and don't click through to the site. But I found that in 95% of cases, featured snippets actually deliver a lot more traffic and you really want to go out there and win them. One way that I discover new featured snippets is by actually using SEMrush and Wikipedia. So let me explain to you what I'm doing. So in SEMrush on organic search, you enter wikipedia.org, you select your target market or language, and then you set a couple of filters. The first one is position. I like to filter from position one to five because that's typically the striking range for featured snippets. The second one is for volume. I typically set a minimum of 50 for search volume just to filter out some very low search volume, irrelevant keywords. And then the next one is really important. So under SERP features, you select on SERP and then featured snippets. You could even, you know, if you want to go after top stories or image carousels or video carousels or images, you can select those as well. And that could follow the same principle. But for today's video, you just select featured snippet. And then what you get is a are, are all the featured snippets uh, for Wikipedia. Now I do want to call out that not all of these are perfectly up to date and Google changes featured snippets all the time. So it could very well happen that you discover a couple of featured snippets throughout this process that are not there anymore. No big deal. Just skip those of course, but just wanted to point out that the data is not 100% in real time accurate. And I think that's, that's perfectly fine. Google just changes the data way too often for that to be the case. Now, of course you don't want to download almost 3 million rows of feature snippets here. So the one thing that I do is I use the filter by keyword feature to filter by the topic that I care about mostly, right? So if you have an e-commerce store, say you, you sell dog harnesses, right? Then you can just, you just enter dog or you enter maybe dog harness. And then you'll get all these feature snippets filtered down by all the, you know, uh, keywords that include dog. It's still 9,000 or a bit over 9,000 actually. So you might want to narrow that down even more. You could also do something in the B2B space, let's say CRM, and boom, we get 32 keywords that include the term CRM. Or let's do something like credit card. If you go into the finance space, 145 keywords, amazing. Um, so from here, our next step is to export these all of these uh, keywords. I already prepared the export here, but I promise I didn't do anything else to the data sheet. Let's make this a little bit pretty because in my mind, when you work with any data, it should look good. So it feels good. So you find out the, where the insights you can probably delete everything after traffic or even, you know, even beyond that, you can just take all of this out for now. Boom. And what really matters, of course, is the keyword, but then also the URL. You could even take out position because it's not super important. You might also want to care about search volume. So I just like to rearrange my sheets so that the most important information lives as far on the left as possible. And um, the reason I want to look at these is because you now have 145 opportunities for featured snippets. Most of them should be relevant. Some of them might might not be, but the data is still pretty noisy and it might not tell you what keywords to create content for. And so what we want to do in essence is we want to create a filter and we want to make sure that we only see featured snippets by the same URL so that we can understand how many different featured snippets we can get with a single URL and how we can structure our content or should structure our content to get them. So what I like to do is I like to select two rows, uh, sorry, two columns, and I like to, to sort them both. So you're going to go to sort range, advanced range sorting options. You click on data has a header row, and then you can say, okay, my primary sorting should be by URL. You can select A to Z. It doesn't really matter if, which one of those you take. And then you add another sorting column, which is search volume and that you select top down. And then this way for any page, you always have the featured snippet with the most traffic on top. But more importantly, you know that you can target all of these featured snippets with a single piece of content. Now, why is it the case? Because we filtered the keywords that show featured snippets by position one to five. And that is typically the striking range for a site to be eligible 
to compete for the featured snippet. There are outliers and there are exceptions, but for now we're gonna focus on the average. And by focusing on position one to five, you make sure that all of these URLs are actually in striking range are actually eligible for a featured snippet. Another thing that you could do, right, is you could filter by keyword difficulty. If, for example, your domain cannot compete for keywords that have a difficulty higher than, let's just say, 60, for example, right, then you can add a condition here and you can say is less than 60. Boom, okay, nothing here. That means maybe this is not a good this is not a good opportunity for you. Actually, let me let me revise this real quick because that should actually work. It's less than sixty. Okay, I forgot to select them all. Boom! Now we got only keywords with the keyword difficulty lower sixty. It's still a good amount here. How many do we have? Twenty two. Not too bad. So now you know you can create. Um, content and you know how many different pieces of content you have to create right so we can count this we have one uh sorry we have two three four five six seven eight nine different pieces of content to address all of these featured snipp snippets and the next thing that i typically like to do is i like to filter them by the user intent and this is something that you'll probably have to do manually at least for now but in essence so security number and credit card obviously has a very different intent than what a credit card is made of right so these would be two different sections same as credit card algorithm and credit card definition economics right? so these, these will all be different questions so to say and what i like to do is i like to copy and paste them into I like to look at the search results and see what is actually shown up here. So the first one is a PDF from the FDIC. The first one is a PDF from the FDIC. And you basically want to see what type of content do they have here. Now, the funny thing about a PDF here is that it's probably, it's much more likely to outrank them with a regular page. Google will rank PDFs when there is no better alternative, but when there is, they'll prefer the HTML page because they don't want users to necessarily having to download a PDF. There's an additional step of friction. And so you might be able to just, I don't want to say copy paste the content here, but imitate the format in which they answer the question here and add that to your content. So in most cases, what I notice is that a lot of times it's enough to add a couple of sentences to even get a featured snippet, especially when there's not a lot of competition. Right? Another example would be this uh, security code. So there's a question, what is the security code? Length of a credit card, which I'm not sure why it relates to the security code question. Um, but then the credit card number format, what is CSC? Um, all these, th these might be three different sections you add to a piece of content. You could even add it to an FAQ at the end of your content and make sure that you rank. The really important thing with featured snippets is that you answer, you, you kind of um, have the question, you answer it one-to-one -one on your content. But uh, as you can see, if you get into these positions, you might even rank for a search result that doesn't have any ads for the number one result. And, and you know, that could be, it could be a juicy traffic opportunity. Again, there might be exceptions in which the feature snippet gives away so much information that users don't click through. But in the majority of cases, I noticed that they actually increase traffic significantly and you really want to win them. So now you have a very scrappy and easy process to figure out featured snippet opportunities and also what different sections you want to embed in your content so that you have a chance to rank for these featured snippet opportunities. Thanks as always for tuning in uh, and I'll see you next time for another SEO workflow idea. Cheers. Bye.